Well, Sam, we'll start with a moderator question, then we'll move to uh, questions in the room and then online. I know it's not ideal to do it against a fellow Aussie, but you still must be thrilled to get through to the next round. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's just unfortunately the luck of the draw sometimes playing a fellow Aussie, but, um, you know, I'm really happy to get through tonight's match, very happy with the way I played and, um, yeah, moving on to the second round for the first time in a while, so it's exciting for me. You mentioned in a while, 2015. Did you realise it was that long? Did it feel that way? That you were, had a bit of a monkey on the back? Uh, I didn't know, but then I read something about it from one of you guys, so then I knew, but um, <laughs> like, it wasn't like, oh, my God, it's been, you know, this long or anything going into the match. But, um, yeah, it, it's just a nice feeling to get a win on the board again and, um, yeah, be into the second round. How did you feel about it? I actually felt pretty good. Um, you know, it was, obviously we were both losing serve the first four times or whatever it was, but... Um, I felt like it was kind of the easy shots that was letting me down. So I was like, you know, I'll, I will start making those. And if I, you know, started winning the first point of the game um, occasionally, then I kind of felt like I was going to be able to hold serve. So that's just kind of the mindset and what I was trying to go into each one. And then thankfully serving for the set, I was able to get myself out of a bit of a hole with some good serves and then get that and then held a lot more, you know, easily throughout that second set. So, um, look, there were certainly some ups and downs and some shots I wish were better, but, you know, that's part and parcel with playing tennis and all of that. So, yeah, look, a win's a win. Scott? What about playing in front of fewer fans? How did that feel? You, you've played so many straight opens. That that was, did it feel different? Did it... Oh, it definitely felt very different out there, especially in a big stadium like um, John Kane Arena when there's, you know, there's... I don't even know what it was, you know, barely full, really. Um, it does feel different in a big stadium when it's like that. But, you know, unfortunately, that's just the way it has to be at the moment. And, um, you know, you can still use the crowd. There was still, you know, good support out there, which was nice. And hopefully I'll get that again for the next match. You told us you didn't look, you didn't even know you had destiny for a day or so until, you, until Renee told you. Mm -hmm. um, do you know who you've got next? Have you seen? Well, I do now because then the court announcer told me when I was on the court. <laughs> yeah, so we played Jess. Um, we played a couple of times. Um, look, she hits a good ball. She flat, hard. Obviously, had a very good win today against Vika. And um, yeah, I'll have to be on my game and know. All right, but have a plan again. I really stuck to my plan well tonight, so I'll do the same thing against her. And um, yeah, hopefully, it's good enough pre-tournament about not having expectations this year. Mm -hmm. did, did that help? Did, did you feel different out there than that you have in previous Oz Opens? Um, yeah, I mean, probably. I think tonight I felt, you know, a little bit different than maybe previous Oz Opens, a little bit different to some previous matches, and they've been obviously very few and far between in the last year and a half or so, but um, that's what I'm pleased about, that I was able to, you know, have what happened last week um, after a couple of days of, you know being in a bad mood and moping around and I got myself out of that and had a couple of good days of, you know, really good practice going into today's match and knew that I had to, um, you know, change that attitude and put that aside and go into today feeling good and, you know, knowing that I've done everything I possibly can and that's what I did. So that's the most pleasing thing, I guess, from whether it's Aussie Open previous years or just last week, whatever it was, just to be able to bounce back from a match like that is, yeah, I'm very happy with. How much, how, how much tennis did you play in the last year or so, and how did you spend the time? How did you spend the time when you weren't playing tennis? Um, well, I played the one two five at Indian Wells. I think it was late Feb. We got home as soon as Indian Wells was cancelled, um, and yeah, didn't I, you know? Didn't hit a ball for two and a half months when my daughter was born and then started hitting a little bit kind of September and um, the last couple of months was in full you know normal pre-season kind of training so it was it's a steady slow progression after many many weeks off that I you know haven't had for a very long time so um, yeah it was certainly a very different year for me but um, you know an exciting one as well. Back into high level high level competition after you know missing what a lot of these women experienced through you know from August into November. Oh it? sure, it's um, you know that long out um, playing competitive tennis is you know it's not easy to um, you know 
step out on court and play those first matches sometimes. So um, that's kind of the way I ended up looking at last week was kind of blowing the cobwebs out and doing that. And um, But, yeah, look, there was certainly some times through the pre-season when you start playing points again after such a long time... Um, you know, it was hard against all the girls who just played French and US Open and all of that. And, um, you know, it wasn't always a good feeling, you know, losing set after set, but knew that, OK, I've still got another month to play till, you know, till it really matters. And that's kind of the steady progression that I was able to give myself, I guess, knowing that you've got so much time not to kind of burn yourself out and go too hard too early. Last couple. Does that feel then like a, a nice break you've had in your career? It was obviously not planned, but just everything fell that way and you've been able to, you know, be refreshed? Yeah, well, I mean, that's certainly the way I tried to look at it. It's, um, yeah, I, I kind of thought, OK, well, this is the way it is. Um, take it as a break, refresh, you know, feel good and healthy in your body again and, um, yeah, just enjoy that kind of feeling of not being, you know, trashed every week. So... Um, that's kind of the way I've looked at it, but it certainly was it was it was really hard, you know, getting back into kind of tournament mode, match mode, focus, and all of that in the last couple of weeks. So it certainly, um, you know, a different kind of situation, no doubt. But yeah, it's just the way it is. So you got to you know deal with what you got. Sam, nice one. What did you make of Destiny? Like she at eighteen, she was top two hundred and looked like she was about to burst into the scene, and then mm-hmm. she's had a tougher couple of years. Like. It's a tough journey out there on the tennis tour, especially at that age. What, what advice do you have for him? Yeah, what did you? What did you oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's tough. I think sometimes when you, like you said, eighteen, top two hundred. Um, I remember she had a, a good match against Halep here a few years ago, um, and yeah, talk about expectation. Then expectation rises from probably herself, from you know everyone, and um, sometimes it's hard to then make that breakthrough when people then. Um, you know, know who you are, know what your game's like, you've got to do it again next year and, and often the second year after a breakthrough is harder than the first because then everyone knows you and you're kind of the, the one to beat. So, um, yeah, look, I mean, she can play well, obviously. She can um, do good things out there. and, and But, yeah, I, I think it's really important for someone like her and probably a lot of the Aussies, um, you know, you've got to play against the best players in the world more often and, and regularly and, um, you know, get yourself into a better ranking bracket so that you can play WTA tournaments even if it's qualifying because that's where you, you need to be playing the best players in the world. So, um, but, yeah, it's it's a tough journey. It's not easy for anyone out there. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.